NBC 15 News at 11 starts now. Now at 11, the body of a missing boater has been found in Lake Mendota. Plus, we'll have details on the urgent talking points at the G7 talks in, some, er, in Germany. Come, and it's day three in the search for two convicted killers who escaped from a New York prison. Breaking news at 11. Police say they have found the body of a missing boater who disappeared in Lake Mendota over the weekend. Dane County deputies responded to a call of a possible drowning Saturday afternoon. The body of a man was found in approximately 60 feet of water with a depth scanner around 10 this morning. They recovered the body a quarter mile offshore. We will update this story as soon as we receive more information. A woman is in custody after a standoff with police in Janesville. It happened around 10 last night on the 300 block of West Racine Street. When police arrived, they found a man who had been stabbed. Police arrested this woman, Dana Carey, after a brief standoff. Police say she got into an argument with her boyfriend. The man's stab wounds are not considered life-threatening. And we have a sunshine going on right now, but there's still a chance for rain later today. We're going to send it over to Charlie to see when we might be able to expect those showers. Uh, later this afternoon, we have that uh, possibility, and actually the chances are fairly high, running at 50% uh, chance, but uh, uh, it is going to be a warm day. We have sunshine out there right now. The forecast through the afternoon is calling for temperatures to rise and uh, we'll see highs topping off this afternoon in the low 80s well above average uh, northwesterly winds 14 miles per hour at 3 p.m. 13 at 6 and you can see those showers uh, coming up possibly later on a warmer day for tomorrow and also for Wednesday and we're also going to see an increase in the humidity level we'll talk more about that coming up in about eight minutes the white former North, Car North Charleston, South Carolina police officer has been indicted on a murder charge after the fatal shooting of an unarmed black man who was running away from him. The April 4th shooting was captured on tape by a bystander and showed Officer Michael Slager firing eight times at 50-year-old Walter Scott. The shooting rekindled the ongoing national debate about the treatment of black suspects at the hands of white officers. Slager was charged almost immediately after the video surfaced. The 33-year-old faces 30 years to life in prison if convicted. Today marks day three in a desperate manhunt for two convicted killers whose escape from a New York prison was so elaborate many are asking if they had help from the inside. The two killers are considered extremely dangerous as officials widen their search today to include Canada and Mexico. NBC's Miguel Almaguer says authorities concede they are no closer to finding the convicts. Overnight and into the morning, the desperate around-the-clock manhunt for two killers. We're leaving no stone unturned. They could be literally anywhere. Some 250 heavily armed officers with canines, combing the woods, searching cemeteries and schools for convicts David Sweat and Richard Matt. Sweat was serving life after killing a sheriff's deputy, shooting him 22 times. Matt serving 25 years to life, for kidnapping, beating, killing, and dismembering his boss. They were discovered missing early Saturday morning, breaking out of prison with power tools. We did not uh, recover sophisticated cutting tools. We are still looking for those tools. The escape from this maximum security facility in upstate New York, 25 miles from Canada, retraced by New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, who called it elaborate and sophisticated. That's solid. He says the prisoners in side-by-side -side cells stuff their bunks with clothes to avoid detection. They cut holes through the steel wall behind their beds, crawled onto this catwalk six stories up, broke through a brick wall two feet thick, cutting holes into and out of a 24-inch steam pipe, shimmying beneath the prison wall, then breaking out of a manhole more than a block away. They left behind a post-it note with a racist image, reading, have a nice day. When you look at how it was done, it was extraordinary. With the governor saying the inmates must have been heard, the tiny town of Danny Mora is now a fortress. The whole community is a little upside down right now. 
This morning, the hunt for two desperate men who have killed before and could do it again. That was Miguel Almaguer reporting the rural area is dotted with abandoned barns and next to rugged forested terrain. Grid searches have turned up nothing. Investigators say the inmates could have gotten help from both inside and outside the prison. And one of the inmates, Richard Matt, had escaped from a different prison in 1986. The governor calls this escape a crisis for New York. While American Pharaoh and his team continue to celebrate their Triple Crown victory, they are already looking forward to the future. The horse won at Belmont on Saturday after wins at the Preakness and the Kentucky Derby. This morning on Today, owner Ahmed Zayat said he's not retiring American Pharaoh just yet because he wants to share the superstar with all his fans. Before anything, I'm a fan. I love the sports. I love my horses. And he belongs to all of us right now. Everybody had been waiting for such a long time. And a sport without any star is not a sport. And I just want to show him off. Like you said, he now have, he defined greatness. There's only 12 right now in the history of the game that have done that since 1875. So he belongs to all of us. Taking a turn now, the G7 summit started and will end with a clear focus, prevent Russia from interfering with Ukraine's sovereignty. It was once known as the G8 summit until Russia was kicked out last year for supporting rebels trying to overthrow Ukraine's government. NBC News correspondent Edward Lawrence has more. President Obama met first with French President Hollande at the G7 summit. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you. The first of many meetings with all of the leaders of the G7. The summit is happening in a remote Bavarian castle where President Obama hopes to solidify the world's message to the Russian president and dig into other timely issues. Standing up to Russian aggression in Ukraine, combating threats from violent extremism, to climate change. Climate change and energy policy on the agenda of today's outreach session. The president also hopes to extend economic sanctions against Russia, set to expire at the end of July, and walk away with stronger trade deals between the G7 countries. Putin was kicked out of the summit last year when Russia annexed part of the Ukraine. Putin maintains he was responding to threats in the region. If you can't trust uh, Mr. Putin to go back home the day after and actually do what he's uh, promised, then having them at the table uh, won't get you very far uh, at all. Edward Lawrence, NBC News, Washington. The summit also allowed the world leaders to discuss ISIS. Great Britain announced Sunday it's sending more military training personnel to help Iraqi troops fight the threat. National and local celebrities are heading out to the golf range today for the 18th annual Tellurian Celebrity Golf Tournament. The tournament is hosted by the Green, Day, Green Bay Packers and Dayton Jones. It helps raise money for Tellurian's family of services. The program provides services and homes to people affected with addicted disorders, mental illness, and homelessness. We'll be there covering the event today, so be sure to tune in at 5 and 6. And we have an update for you on a story we did back in March. Students at Northside Elementary School in Monroe made it their mission to not only change the world, but to raise money for the Wheelchair Foundation. The group of fourth and fifth graders made bracelets and did other fundraisers over the past few months. And we are excited to share that they have raised $7,000. This means they will be able to provide 46 wheelchairs to people in need all over the world.